Praise the Lord. Good morning. Thanks to God. Welcome to today's Sea Time and Harvest Broadcast. I'd like to give you an exhortation today that joy to the world and peace on earth and goodwill toward all men. Praise the Lord. We welcome to come into this opportunity to fellowship with you again on this day. Thanks to God. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this what we refer to as Christmas Eve. And so we have a special message that we're going to deliver to you today entitled Christ is the reality or the reality is Christ. And so I want you to think about that statement as we will go through a portion of scripture from the book of Colossians chapter 2. Our foundational text would be verse 17, but we'll look at that scripture in context to glean the understanding that the Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Colossus. And I, and I see that it is very relevant for our time as it was then, before the message of Christ never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so it is very pertinent for us to be able to remind ourselves or reset ourselves as we approach another Christmas season, understanding that Christ is the reality. He is the reality of all that was promised. He is the reality of all that is. He is the reality of all that will ever be. And so that is very good news and that is a great encouragement, I pray, for each and every one of you who will be listening to this message today. So let's take a look at our foundational text and then we'll get a word of prayer. If you want to be following along with me, we're looking at the book of Colossians chapter 2. Our foundational text will be verse 17. Now, you may not be able to understand it in context as I read this portion of scripture, but this will be the icing on the cake, so to speak. So just pay attention to this foundational text, then as we get into the meat of our message, hopefully it'll make more sense to you then. Colossians chapter 2, verse 17 reads, These are a shadow of the things to come, but the body that cast it belongs to Christ. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we bless and we glorify your name again on this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this moment that you have given us. This moment and hour that you have given us to acknowledge your name and to express our faith in you and to declare your glory over mankind. We thank you today for this word that you have given us that is relevant to our lives. May it penetrate deep into our mind and soul and our hearts. May it illuminate our mind and heart. May it transform us. May it conform us to your will, O oh God. May it work for our good and for your glory. So I thank you for the life, the health, and the wealth of each person under the sound of my voice. I thank you for that flicker of light, of faith that burns brightly within them. May you fan that fire today. May it grow brighter and brighter to illuminate the whole earth with your glory. And I praise you and I thank you today for revealing yourself to us by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Again, thanks to Christ is the reality. That is what we're going to be talking about today, as specific, specifically relevant for our season that we're currently in, which is current, we refer to this in the Western world as the Christmas season. Today is commonly referred to as Christmas Eve. It is a time where we gather around Christ and around the name of Christ. So if you take out Christ, there's no reason to gather. If you take out Christ, there's no reason to give. If you take out Christ, there's no reason to celebrate this time of year. So a lot of things can get in the way of clouding out what this time of year is really about. But as we see way back thousands of years ago, as the Apostle Paul was inspired to pin this letter to the church in Colossus, we see the eternal nature of God on display. We see that God foreknew our day in his day. And that God has for, always have foreseen all the days of our life, our past, our present, and our future. And so as I looked at this portion of scripture this week, 
it really resonated upon me how all wise God really is. How he knows all things. He knows the ending before the beginning. And so as we take a look at this scripture afresh today, I think you will be able to see that behind all the celebrations, all the decorations, all of the shopping and giving, that there's a real truth that needs to be recognized or a real truth that we need to be uh, made aware of or to place at the forefront of all of our celebrations during this time of year. And the Apostle Paul expressed it greatly in this portion of scripture. In the text that we looked at, it says that these things, now of course no one starts a sentence with these in the English language, so there were several things that were preceding this statement that Paul's conclusion for the church in Carlos was that these are simply a shadow of the things. But the body or the reality of the one that cast the shadow is Christ. And that is what it is about this time of year. We call it Christmas, which means Christ mask. So the reality of everything that we're doing during this time of year is centered around the reality of Jesus Christ the son of the living God, the baby born in a manger, God made flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, the great I am, the Messiah, the deliverer, the promise, hallelujah. This is the reality that prayerfully we'll be reminded of as we listen to this message and as we go out through the, 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 the next few days and hours and weeks and, and prayerfully a lifetime of remembrance of the reality of Jesus Christ. Some of that, the reality of Christ. Now, in order to understand that scripture that we read in context, we have to back up to the first verse of this chapter. Let's back up to verse 1. And we're looking at Colossians chapter 2. Now, if you look at most Bible verses, they have certain little headings that have been placed there to talk about what's in the next preceding verses. In my particular Bible that I'm looking at today, it's looking at the Berean Study Bible. This first section of this chapter deals with being absent in body but present in spirit. And this is where the Apostle Paul was speaking to the church in Carlos, that even though he was absent from the believers in body, he was present with them in spirit, but also want us to know that even though Christ may be absent from us in body, he is present with us in spirit. Yet yeah, a lot of us are very familiar with the term present during this time of year or presence. But I want you to think about a present as being present in spirit. Hallelujah. It's not something you have to stand in line for at a local shopping center. It is not something you have to order online and wait for it to be delivered to your home. Christ is present in spirit with us even now. Hallelujah. It's the greatest present that we will ever receive, saints of God. And so here it is. Let's read the text. Verse 1, Colossians chapter 2. Paul, the Apostle Paul says to the church in Carlos, I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me face to face that you may be encouraged in heart knit together in love and filled with the full riches of complete understanding so that you may know the mystery of God namely Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Verse 4. I say this so that no one will deceive you by smooth rhetoric. For although I am absent from you in body, I am present. Someone said, I am present. I am present with you in spirit. And I delight to see your orderly condition and firm faith in Christ. Now, thanks to God, as we look at this portion of scripture, during this time that this letter was inspired by the Apostle Paul, they did not celebrate a season that we are commonly 
familiar with as Christmas. But the same root message is relevant today as it was then. The present, I want you to be to look at this in the right light today, thanks to God. The present is the spirit of God that is still with us just as it was with the Apostle Paul and those that he was writing to many, many thousands of years ago. He says, I want you to know how much I'm struggling for those of you in Laodicea. But I really love what he said, that even though you may have met me face to face, just as in all reality, we may not have met Christ face to face. But here are three things that the Apostle Paul says he wanted to give or that he wanted the church or the believers in Laodicea to receive today. And these are three things that I want you to be able to receive this year as well. If no one gets you a present, no one, if you have no one to celebrate Christmas with, if you may be uh, serving in the military overseas, you may be a widow or a widower, you may be separated from your family. I want you to know that there's a presence that God has made available for all of us. It does not have to be wrapped. It is something that is always with us. And here's the three things that the Apostle Paul expressed, and I believe the Holy Spirit is expressing today. After he said that, even though you have not met me face to face, I, I pray that you may be encouraged in heart. This is three things that I'm speaking to each and every person under the sound of my voice right now, that you may be encouraged in heart. If you're gathering with family or friends, associates, or even among strangers, I pray that you be knit together in love. And thirdly, that you be filled with the full riches, someone said to me, the full riches, be filled with the full riches of complete understanding. So we see three gifts that Paul wants to give to the church in Laodicea, and these are three gifts that I pray that you receive today is, is encouragement in heart, that you'll be knit together in love, and that you'll be filled with the full riches of complete understanding. Now there was a reason why the Apostle Paul says, I, I pray these three things for you. And he says, so that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. These are the very same reasons why I believe the Holy Spirit is inspiring this message today. This is the very same reason, whether we realize it, recognize it or not, that we celebrate this time called Christmas or not, that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. Someone said to me, Christ is the reality. He says, I want you to know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I'm sure that as we look under our Christmas trees or whatever form of celebration we take, if there are presents under your tree, I, I, I'm pretty sure that tomorrow nobody's going to open a present that is going to be wisdom and knowledge. For these are the gifts that come from God. How many of you today need wisdom? How many of you today need knowledge? Well, I want you to know that you may not find this gift wrapped in a present under your tree, but I want you to know that it is very present with you now because of the reality of Christ. Hallelujah, that should be good news for somebody today. Not only is Christ present, some of the present, he's present with us in spirit, he has made us alive in him. Let's look at verse number six. Today we're talking about the reality of Christ. Hallelujah. Verse six, the apostle Paul goes on to say, therefore, or as a result of what I just stated to you about your faith being firm in Christ, therefore, just as you have received Christ, Jesus as Lord, continue to live with him. Seeing that Christ is not a holiday, Christ is not one day a year, Christ is not a season, Christ is our eternal Lord, he's our eternal Savior, he's God every day of our lives. So the apostle says, just as you have received Christ, some of you will receive a gift this year and it may be discarded 
by next year. But Christ is something that you receive once and he with you always. So the apostle says, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, established in your faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 8, he says, See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, which are based on human tradition and the spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, verse 9, for in Christ all the fullness of the deity, which is another word for God, dwells in bodily form. And you have been made complete in Christ who is the head over every ruler and authority. Let's stop for a moment right here, saints of God, and really understand what the Apostle Paul, as he was inspired by the Holy Spirit, speaking to the church in Laodicea, as God is speaking to us today. We must also see, as he says in verse number 8, we must make sure we see that no one takes us captive through philosophy and empty deceptions which are based on human tradition and the spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Now we can understand that there's sometimes that the message of Christ can get lost in Christmas. In fact, many people who don't want to be offensive to other people groups will simply say Happy Xmas or Happy Holidays to you. But the holiday is centered around Christ. That is the reality, children of God. The Xmas, the X in Xmas represents Christ. And he cannot be removed from the season. For if he is, the season is not a season that will be recognized or celebrated anywhere around the world. Today we're talking about the reality of Christ. So even way back when Apostle Paul wrote these letters, he understood that there will be things that can sometimes uh, cloud the situation or cloud the reality of what is really being spoken or cloud the reality of what should be seen in this time. He says, see to it. And the Holy Spirit say to each and every one of us today, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception which are based on human tradition and the spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of God dwells in bodily form and we have been made complete. Hallelujah. Why would we want to hide the reality of Jesus? For he has made us complete, mature, whole in knowing him. For he is the head over every ruler and authority. Hallelujah. Somebody said to me, the reality of Christ. Verse 11. In him, you were also circumcised in the putting off of your sinful nature with the circumcision performed by, say it with me, performed by Christ and not by human hands. Verse 12. And having been buried with him, which is Christ in baptism, you were raised with him, which is Christ, through your faith in the power of God, who raised him, which is Christ, from the dead. Verse 13. When you were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumstances of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us of all our trespasses having canceled the debt ascribed to us in the decrees that stood against us, he took it away and nailing it to the cross. Hallelujah, saints of God. And having disarmed the rulers and authorities of this world, he made a public spectacle of them by triumphing over them by the cross. Now we get down to the foundational text that we read earlier. I pray that now that as you see Paul 
had to uncover or reveal to those that he was speaking to at the time that Christ is the reality of all things, past, present, and future. I want to reveal or remind each and every one of us today that Christ is the reality of things that are past, present, and future. So verse 16, we get down, it says, now that you, or if you, or I hope that you have embraced and understood the reality of Christ that has been expressed to you, he says in verse 16, therefore let no one judge you about what you eat or drink or with regard to a festival, a new moon, or a Sabbath. That is, do not let anyone judge you about how or why or if you celebrate Christmas, Xmas, Happy Holidays, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or whatever festival, whatever type of festivities you have, whether you eat certain foods or don't eat certain foods, whether you drink certain things or not, says, therefore, let no one judge you. For these things are a shadow of things to come. They are not the reality. What you eat, what you drink, your festivals, your new moons, are simply shadows of things to come. They are not the reality. Hallelujah, saints of God. So therefore, let no one judge you by these things. Verse 17. The apostle says, these are a shadow of the things to come, but the body that cast its shadow belongs to Christ, which is the reality of all that you celebrate, all the reasons why you may abstain from certain things or why you may abstain from certain drinks or why you may recognize certain festivals or new moons. Christ is the reason. So don't ever substitute the shadow for the real thing. Christ and faith in Christ is based in reality, not in fantasy. Let us live in the reality of knowing that Jesus Christ is, he was, and he will always be the anointed one, the savior of the world. And that we can have what Paul expressed in this text each and every day of our lives. We can have the circumcision of our heart that is performed by Christ. We can be raised with him through the power of our faith in God. We can have those three things that the Apostle Paul expressed that he wanted the early church in Laodicea to have. And what I want you to have today, children of God. I pray and I reiterate again in your hearing today as we prayerfully recognize the reality of Jesus Christ as the forefront of all that we do during this time of year. For without Christ, there is no Christmas. There is no Xmas. There is no happy holidays. So thanks to God, as you go through these next few days and weeks uh, in this hol holiday season, I speak these three things over your life. I speak the three things that Paul spoke into the early church's life in verse 2, that you may be encouraged. There may be somebody today who is feeling alone, maybe isolated. Some people may gather with family and friends, but may not feel like family or friends. I pray that you will be encouraged in heart. There may be people who may be alone and may not feel love. There may be those who are gathering with others who may not be expressing love. I pray that as you gather, that you will be knit together in love. And some of you may be filled with the food and the drink that you have during your celebrations, but I pray that you will also be filled with the full riches of complete understanding so that each and every one of you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all treasures, someone said all treasures, in him are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Father, I thank you today for this time that you have given us. I thank you for the celebration of this year because the celebration recognizes the reality of Christ. And may you become real in the lives of each and every person under the sound and hearing of my voice today. May you be present with them. You may be the only present that some people receive this year. But your presence is the greatest gift of all.
So we thank you, we praise you, and we acknowledge you. May each and every one of us embrace today afresh the reality of Christ. Amen.